morning. Yeah. Well, yesterday I did come back to the model table. Pretty much knew I was going to say that, right? I didn't do anything exciting though, but we we got almost all the pieces. Well, one of the one of the viewers in a comment last night mentioned that we are soon going to be through a lot of the sprues. In other words, I'll have more to hang on the wall. And and last night I was noticing that the J sprue here, the the only thing left on it is this little box thing. It's uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's supposed to be probably some sort of a maybe a little tool shed or something that's supposed to go on the somewhere on the ship. <laughs> I don't know what it is. There's no, there's no I was noticing though I was looking at it closely this morning and there, there's no detail on it. Like there's no little doors or usually they got like a door or something like that or even little portholes. But there's nothing. It's just now I stand corrected here. It does appear that there's something going on on the roof. If that's a roof. Anyway, we'll stick it on wherever it has to go. But that's all that's left on, on these three J sprues. Got the rest of the stuff last night. And uh, that's probably the way it's it's going to go today. We're just going to be getting more small parts. I don't think it's going to be a very exciting day. Little by little, though, we are getting through the manual. We're little by little. We're getting to the place where we will be able to get the hull and set it on here and start placing parts after they're painted. Now, one of the viewers reminded me that we still got to paint you know the the uh, anchor anchor chain ways and stuff like that uh, on, on the uh, on the bow on the forecastle and uh, yeah so there there is little things that I'm forgetting about uh, that that are uh, you might say set us back now I, I think maybe setting us back is the wrong way to look at it um, you know it it doesn't really matter if if this thing is done in a year or if it's done in two years. The main thing about a hobby like this is it gives you something enjoyable to do. Um, yeah, it, it's not a, it's not about uh, it's not like I'm commissioned to 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 do this. It's uh, uh, yeah, it, it, just have fun with it, you know, and and t and just go go with the flow, as as the saying goes. Anyway, let's let's roll back and. Uh, and see how it is that that we got to this place. When we left off the last episode, I was saying that we need J13 and Q3, and that's all that's left to get uh, for step 18 here. Now, what I've been doing lately is, you know, I look ahead. Where where all do we need the J13s, especially when? I, I just checked and uh, there are three J sprues and these are all the 13 so there's a total of nine and and I did peruse ahead a little bit in the manual here and, and I did not see anywhere else where we need the J13s. Now as for the, uh, no, maybe I should get back to this, I am going to cut all nine of them and get them on a rotating block and paint them. It It could well be that uh, the the Nelson kit used a whole bunch more, but it doesn't matter. It, it's not going to use up that much more paint to, to paint them all, and then don't need to worry about it. Could be I missed them. Now, as for the Q3s, I when I paged ahead, I did see these being used uh, some in some places, a way into the build or near the end of the build, you might say. Uh, so we'll we'll do the excuse my reach here. Okay, these, these ones here are the Q3s. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be, if I'm going to want the outside of these painted, the number 56 or not. Uh, it, it could be that when it comes to actually putting them down on the ship, I might, I might paint the outside of them. Um, the, uh, what is it, the 66 we're using, 66 gray? Uh, I thought it might match better. On the other hand, 
Uh, but but I will go ahead and, and paint them the entire thing with the 56 and and then we can always uh, add, change the outside later um, so I think what I'll do with, with these ones I'll just put each one on a rotating block because it will be easy easier to paint that way um, at least that's the plan right now Okay, here is our J13s, and as I mentioned, I'm going to cut all nine of them. Now, while I'm thinking of it, uh, Steve in the Model Shed has just uh, uploaded uh, episode number two of his Bismarck build. And I'm pretty sure I talked about this before. Those of you who are doing the uh, Trumpeters 1 200 scale Bismarck, you do well to follow this. You're going to see a lot of stuff on there that he's doing. He's doing an extremely detailed uh, job on it already, doing modifications and so on that probably most people, it might be either beyond them or they don't want to take the time to do it, but it is really interesting to see, to see what he's doing. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd... Uh, throw that in there because, well, I, I, like I mentioned, I, I do know that a lot of you are doing or planning to do the one, one 200 scale trumpeter Bismarck. So anyway, let's, uh, I'm going to just uh, do the other two sprues off camera and get them. Now the area on the bottom that this is actually adhering to is, is very small. But I, I think that this uh, tape being as it's so sticky, it, it should stay on. Oh, what's that in there? Well, it's gone anyway, whatever it was. Now, because these uh, J13s are so similar to other little boxes that we're doing, I did write J13 on it, but these uh, Q3s or whatever they are, I, I don't think we need to. There's, uh, they're, they're pretty obvious. I don't think we'll get them mixed up with anything else. There is another part that is similar to this, but it's uh, flat sort of on one side as best I remember. As near as I can tell, we now have all the pieces for step 18. And step 19. You know what? That's going to have to be tomorrow. See you in the morning. 
Okay, it is morning, and our sunrise this morning did look promising for a while, and then it just sort of dwindled out. And the weatherman is predicting cloudiness and rain showers for the next four days. But that's okay, because when we get our sunshine, we'll appreciate it all the more, right? Okay. Here we go, step 19. And it just uh, looks like we're going to be making one part here. And there's a little bit of photo itch involved, but I don't think it's going to give us much trouble. Um, yeah, well, I guess that's supposed to be sort of a pulley thing. Let, let's Just let me recompose here. Well, first let's find our uh, C50. And here is another piece that we do not need to make a label for. It is so obvious. It's one of a kind. Okay. We now need two H35s. And there's some, some sort of a little clevis or maybe to form a hinge maybe that goes on the bottom here. And uh, I found them. At least I found one of them. Now you can see here where a person is going to want to be careful when you nip this off that you don't uh, nip in the wrong place. Because uh, you know, if you nip it, nip it up here, you're going to remove part of the shank that's necessary or to go, or peg maybe you call it, that has to go down into the deck. So we're, we're going to nip well back here. And we'll trim it up later. We'll take a closer look at it with the macro lens later. Now, as you can see, I haven't cut these off yet. When we look nice and close like this. Oh, and I'm going to give you perspective here. Okay. So, I think what a person would do is, I, I think we'll, we'd probably just use the uh, the extra thin and and glue this into place. I I don't know why it is they they couldn't have molded this thing on the end there. I can sort of envision how it could have been molded. There 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 is some flashing on there that's going to be really hard to remove. Just let me grab my uh, cutters here and see if I can't. Okay, now I have a lot of fun seeing if I can do this on camera. Sometimes it works out and sometimes I end up wrecking the part. But fortunately not very often do I wreck the part. Okay, now we're going to want to come in right on the bottom here. that look? That looks just about right, doesn't it? I think if we cut it right there, whoops, mm, it's not quite square. I don't think it would make a lot of difference because that peg is going to go down into a hole. Okay, well, here goes nothing. I suppose we can clean that up a little bit there. Let's, let's try the other one. Get these out of the way. 
Shouldn't really be using this as tweezers, should I? Okay. Now, now remember that one piece is not junk. Okay, let's try it again here. Yeah, this one's going better. Yeah. Yeah, that one's better. Okay, just let me uh, clean this other one up just a little bit. I'm going to do it off camera. Now I've backed off a little bit here so that you get better perspective of the entire thing. Uh, I'm just sort of wondering if I wouldn't be better off to, uh, you know, glue this in place right now. Because it, it doesn't have to swivel like on a hinge, even though that's, that's obviously what it was on the real ship. Um, I'll put the, uh, I'm going to recompose here. I'll put the macro lens uh, on maximum right now. We're backed off a bit. Um, I wonder if I could use the super macro on low power and get in even closer. That'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? I haven't used the super macro for a few days. Okay, I don't know if you can see our little parts down here. We'll move in on them in a minute. Okay, this is the uh, normal macro that you see me using a lot, or at least you get to—you don't get to see me using it. You get to look through it, and it is probably over twice as big as the super macro, even though the super macro will move in five times closer. Now, the the reason that this this lens is so big is because it's got electronic focusing in it, electronic aperture control, whereas the super macro is completely manual. You f well, first of all, you focus it by moving it, you know, further and closer away from the, to the to the subject, and then the to to set the the uh, aperture, it, it's completely manual. It's not automatic at all. It's a very specialty lens. Don't think because you get one of these that suddenly you're going to be able to do a, a wonderful job at uh, you know. I think I've mentioned this use this illustration before. At you know taking close-ups of a, a, a compound fly's eye, that sort of thing. <laughs> you, it's, just, it's just harder to use than you would think. Anyway, but one of the bad features of this lens is that, that when you zoom it out to, to, to its maximum magnification, which is, five, which is five times, in other words, five times as much as this, this lens is what's known as a one-to-one, Whereas this lens will go from two and a half to one to five to one. Now we're going to try and have it back here uh, at at uh, two and a half power. It, it might be just a little sharper, even though we're going to be not quite as close as we could get, because depth of field with this lens is is practically zilch. In fact, it's it's almost non-existent. Uh, well, I guess that's the same thing, right? So uh, what I what I have a problem with is that when I have the camera, let's see if I can do this for you here. Okay, when it's down like this, the lens will slowly all by itself, because of the weight, it will just it will just creep. You might even be able to see it going there. Okay, it's just going all by itself and it's, it won't do that because of the weight. This it's a it's a, a poor design. So so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take a little bit of tape and uh, I think if I use my frog tape, it, I've done this before. Okay, let's, let's, let's back it off here and just try and tape it like this. This tape isn't going to hurt it. Okay, now, now I don't need to worry about it uh, slowly creeping out and going out of focus on me. It'll stay at two and a half instead of creeping down to five. Anyway, um, that was probably as clear as mud, right? Now this may not work and the reason being is, whoops, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up losing these things. 
Reason being is because uh, I can't get my <laughs> my head right over top of the to look straight down. But I think the idea is we want to try and put it put it in something like this. And this is like uh, people that work on, on their wristwatches, mechanical wristwatches. It's the kind of stuff that they have to do. Now, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this on camera or not. But I'm sure having a lot of fun trying here. Ha <laughs> Okay. Well, you know what? I, I think you get the idea, right? I think you get the idea. We, we will get it. That was fun, wasn't it? At least I had fun. Okay, folks. Thanks for watching. All being well, we'll see you tomorrow. And then we'll maybe glue these on in tomorrow's episode. One drop. One drop of this stuff. And it, that, that will uh, completely dissolve these things that are so small. So I have to be careful to... Don't put on one drop. Put on a portion of a drop. How do you how do you measure less than a drop? Well we'll figure it out. See you tomorrow.